Hello learners, welcome to the NIOS studio. I am Dr. Johnson, working as assistant professor in the Department of Lifelong Learning, Aragapa University, Karekudi. Today, we are going to discuss the most important topic that is right-based approach to education. Before going on to this topic, right-based approach to education, it is a foremost one for us to understand what is the right and what is the education that is to be imparted. Each and every child has the right to get education. That is the most important and necessary in the present scenario. Now, let us have a glance over of this picture. Dear future teachers, you have to have a look out of this picture and what is the inference that you get from this picture? Hope, you see over the picture and it is clearly visible over a boy and a girl are having a slate and in that slate what is written over there? Right to education. Therefore, what is the inference that you get over from this picture? There are two inferences. One is that whether it is a boy or a girl or a transgender, whoever it might be, they have the right to get education. Another thing which is entering over or which is that over which we are inferring from the picture is that they are saying, they are advocating another one thing that is yes to education and no to work. That is the one which we will be inferring from the above picture. And the picture also clearly advocates the children have the right to get education in material of their age group and they can get free and compulsory education starting from the age group 6 to 14 years. Yes. Next. Now, this right to base or right based approach to education, what it is going to do in the society or how is it going to help us over in the present scenario? See, education is the most important one and it is to be important to the children of all the age group because it is the one which is going to bring over the upward mobility in the society. And apart from that also, we are also making the children to learn to get educated through the education they are getting development. And through the individual development, what happens? They develop the society also. And through the society, they will develop the countries also. Therefore, this education is the one which brings over uh, upward mobility and makes them to come to an higher strata in the society. Therefore, another one important point we have to look out over is that education plays a crucial role in improving the quality of life of an individual and society. It provides critical inputs for economic prosperity, scientific and technological advancement thereby helping to combat poverty and foster the social equity. It is the one which is helping us to fight the poverty and foster the social equity. What is social equity? It is a balanced state that we bring in over. It is a balanced social cohesion we bring over in the society. Now, let us have a glimpse of what is the child's right in the context of education? See, the many various national bodies and international bodies are come out with the rights of how the child rights to be imparted. Now, let us have a look out of how the international organization are coming out or helping or rendering the help to the children's side. Now, let us see over the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child, namely UNCRC or we shall also say it as CRC. It has given the definition of the child as a child means every human being below the age of 18 years. This is the definition which is given by UNCRC. Another is that the Article 26, it is also a thing which we have to know about how the international organization is helping out. What is Article 26? As a future teachers, please have a look out of what is 
Article 26 and what does it advocates? Article 26 of the 1948 UN Declaration of Human Rights proclaimed that everyone has a right to education and then education should be free and compulsory. It further emphasized the need to direct all the efforts in the educational process towards the full development of the human personality. Now let us have an overview of what does the article 13 says about. Article 13 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights namely ICESCR clearly states education is both a human right in itself and an indispensable means of realizing other human rights. What does that this definition means my dear future teachers please once again I would like to highlight about what this definition actually says about. Education is both a human right. See to know the human right we should be getting educated or we should be in a position to know about what is what. Therefore, education is playing a vital role and once again all the human other human rights if you want to know over definitely education is helping us to know about that. Therefore, hence the definition is clearly cited over there as education is both a human right in itself and an indispensable indispensable means we are not able to separate it therefore it is an indispensable means of realizing other human rights. Now let us have a glimpse of what is this United Nations Convention of Human Rights or Rights of the Child implicates. What are the various features of CRC? The first is that it applies to both girls and boys up to the age of 18. Another principle is that it is guided by the principle of best interest of the child and the non-discrimination, non-discrimination which we should not be separated, the student should not be separated at any platform or any purview based on the caste, color, creed, etc. Another is that respect for the views of the child. We should understand what is the expectation of the child and what how the education should be imparted according to the views of the child that all the things to be taken over uh, as a we should concentrate over on to these factors. Another thing is that it emphasizes the importance of the family. Now let us have a look out of what is CRC's four rights that it is fostering upon that it is advocating upon. CRC draws attention to the four set of civil, political, social, economic and cultural rights. These rights are interdependent but because of the nature they are categorized into immediate rights and progressive rights. Now let us see what is this immediate rights and what are the progressive rights. Immediate rights. These immediate rights are nothing but they, they are nothing but civil as well as the political rights. Civil and political rights comes under this immediate rights which includes the issues related to discrimination. You know what is discrimination we should not separate. Na next is the punishment. We should not punish the children if that is an offense of course and right to fair hearing in criminal cases. Whatever criminal cases if they are indulged over also there should be a right in hearing the case by fair means. And separate system of juvenile justice. This juvenile justice there are juvenile courts are there over and juvenile rights is there. In the year 2015 uh, juvenile rights have been passed upon. But what happened in on 15th August 2016 what happened? The children of the age group 16 to 18, if they are involved in the heinous activities, it is 
considered as a crime and they are considered as the adult peoples and therefore they will be punished over. That is what this juvenile justice just turned over as a amended law in the year 2016 on 15th August. Those who ever commits mistakes of the age group from 16 to 18 will be if they are doing heinous activities definitely they will be considered on par with the adults and therefore accordingly the judgment will be given over to them. That is the thing a separate system of juvenile justice is there over. Another is that right to life to live over, to live in the society they have the right. Another right is that to nationality and another right is that reunification with the family. If they are separated from the family, they have the right to live with their parents. That is what said over in this immediate rights. Now, let us have a glance and view of what is this progressive rights mean. The progressive rights demand immediate attention and action. The progressive rights include mainly health, education, and other economic, social, and cultural rights. When I say health, it is most important. When I say education, that is also most important factor and economic, social, and cultural rights. Therefore, economic strata to be uh, whatever economic, social strata they are, they have to make them to come to an higher strata and social and cultural rights, once again, you know very well. Therefore, as practicing teachers, because once again I repeat, as practicing teachers, you must ensure that children under your supervision are protected from all forms of exploitation, abuse, inhuman of degrading treatment and neglecting the students. Now let us have a look out of what this right to education as a human right. What are the national agencies which advocates over for the right to education as a human right? The first is that right to free and compulsory elementary education for all the children in the age group 6 to 14 years. And this is clearly cited over in the article 21A. Next comes article 24. What does article 24 says? It says that rights to be protected from any hazardous employment till the age of 14 years. What is this hazardous employment? Putting the children over in various factories, various industries, giving them a laborious art task over and that should not be done. That is the one which protects the children from all vulnerable activities. This right serves for the children and safeguards them. Next is uh, Article 39E. This Article 39E depicts rights to be protected from being abused and forced by economic necessity to enter the occupations unsuited to their age or strength. Then comes Article 39F. Article 39F clearly states that right to equal opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner and in the conditions of freedom and dignity and guaranteed protection of the childhood and youth against the exploitation and against the moral and material abandonment. Now, let us have a close look of, of what the right of children to free and compulsory Education Act 2009. The government of India launched Sarva Siksha Abhiyan SSA in 2000 to extend the mission of universalization of elementary education in all the 38 states and union territories. The earlier directive principle became a fundamental right through the 86th Constitutional Amendment Act 2002. The right of children to free and compulsory education, that is Act 2009, 
represents the legislation envisaged under Article 21A. Then what does Article 21A st states that it is right to education? The state shall provide free and compulsory education to all the children of the age of 6 to 14 years in such manner as the state may by law determine. Now let us have a closer look of what does this RT Act 2009 says. The RT Act 2009 along with the Article 21A inserted in the fundamental rights of the constitution of India and has become operational from 1st April 2010. Right of education which is a basic fundamental right is guaranteed to every child in the age group of 6 to 14 years. Following the principles of equity and non-discrimination free from anxiety, stress and fear. What does this equity means? It is a state of fair. We have to be a fair, we have to maintain a fair state and non-discrimination you know very well without any separation and free from anxiety, stress, fear, trauma, phobia, all those things. Now, let us see what are the salient features of the RTE Act 2009. This act makes education a fundamental right of every child between the ages group of 6 to 14. The government schools should provide free education to all the children. See, when I say free education, what does it mean? See, in many private schools, you go over and make your wards to be enrolled over in the schools. You pay tuition fees, you pay extracurricular fees, all the extra fees you pay over. But in the government sector, where what does free education mean? It gives over education in a free mode. And apart from that, it also gives over notebooks, pen, pencils. Understood? What are the things needed for the students? It gives in a free mode. Therefore, the government schools provide free education to all the children. Another, the state shall provide the school in the neighborhood within three years from the enactment of this act. See, when I say neighborhood, what is that? What this means? See, for easy access, the school as well as should be a platform for easy access to the students. If it is of a primary school, it within a kilometer or if it is an upper primary, within 3 kilometers per view. That is what states, that is what highlighted over in this point. Another, private schools shall admit at least 25 percentage of the children in the schools from poor families. This is most important one. See. Nowadays, every parent will aspire their wards to put them in private schools. Therefore, what happens? Everybody is aspiring to put them in the private schools, even in, yeah, at any cost, they want their wards to be uh, getting their education in the private school. It creates, uh, it's creates a mindset among the parents and also it becomes a strata, social strata, recognition of a uh, high strata in the society, putting the wards in the private schools. But what about the children of the marginalized group, children of low economic group, children of the minority, children of tribal area, children from migrated area, what happens to them? If their parents are also interested to get education, to get enrolled the wards in private schools, this is very much helpful for them. See. 25 percentage of the children they can get over admitted in the private schools also and there is a provision for that too. That is what this RT Act 2009 states that. Another thing is that this act also provides that no child shall be held back. See, we should not drop out any child from the 
regular system of education because they are having the right to get education and that should not be any dropouts. That is what this RT Act 2009 mainly emphasize upon. Next, it is the next, it also mentions that each child is given age appropriate education. This is the one another thing which we have to discuss over. See, age appropriate education, how we shall give age appropriate education? See, if the children are uh, uh, around say he is 9 years, but he has not had schooling in a regular formal mode, sometimes he has dropped out from the formal system of education. But if he is getting admitted according to his age, we should put him in the system. Then how to uh, see he did not have the formal system of education regularly means then how we will be able to make the child to cope up with the system, the formal system now, we have to give them bridge on courses. We have to concentrate on the child and the teacher should help the child and he or she should provide the bridge on courses to the child. According though he is admitted according to his age, but still he is a, he did not have the formal system of education or he is a dropout, we have to give him a bridge on course education. That is what this RT Act 2009 mainly emphasize upon. Another idea is that school should have adequate number of teachers and classrooms. This is one of the important concern that we have to look upon. See adequate number of teachers and classroom without giving the proper quality and without proper teachers in the classroom, no wonders will happen in the classroom. Then students enrollment also will be declining. Therefore, based on that only it has come out schools should have adequate number of teachers as well as classroom. Therefore, they will be very much happy, they will have a joyful learning in the classroom systems. Next comes school will have separate toilet for girls as well as for boys, separate toilet for girls and separate toilet for boys that should be really needed for them. Another is that school should be managed by SMC. What is this SMC means? This is school management committee. A school management committee normally will take over from it will be compromising of all say any teachers or the headmaster will act over. Another thing is that uh, the community people also will be part and parcel. The women in that group also will take part in the school management committee. They will also act as a member. RTE reiterates that access not only denote physical access but also ensuring the social access by the way of addressing exclusionary practices in the school. And then school mapping exercise will have to be incorporated in the social mapping which means that the children from socio-economic backward groups are getting enrolled. Now the school is a place and which is giving over an holistic education, fundamental freedom, developing the personality and it should be an ideal school which provides free, compulsory and quality education. Now let us have a glimpse of the pictures over. See the schools, the children are coming out happily, they are having a collaborative work and the children are playing. Here you shall see over, the children are in a joyful josh. The last children is a specially educated, uh, is a student of physical deformity, the last child, but still he is very much happy in the formal regular system of education that happiness is seen in the picture. Now let us have a quick recapitulation of what we have been discussed in this session. The first foremost thing we have discussed is that what is the right based approach to education, child rights in the context of education, what does article 26 and 13 advocates, what are the features of CRC and what are the four rights it is highlighting upon, right to education, how it is acting as a human right, right to of children to free and compulsory education act 2009 and what are the salient features of right to education act 2009. Thank you for your patience listening, hope you had a very wonderful thought provoking session. Thank you.